Hey, Simon, you and I were out there, of course, and we saw it for ourselves. Um, at the games, of course, we came to become aware, as everybody else did, that there was no alcohol on sale or available at the stadiums on match days. And the UK Football Policing Unit have confirmed that English football fans have not been the subject of a single arrest or police incident at this World Cup over in Qatar. Senior officers attribute that to a lack of access to alcohol at matches and a lack of access to cocaine. They've also praised the English and Welsh fans for their exemplary behaviour during the tournament. What do, you, what do you think? Do you think this has worked? I mean, there, there's the evidence. If we needed any evidence, there it is. Not a single arrest. And the lack of alcohol, you would think, has a great deal to do with that. Possibly. <clears throat> the, the lack of tickets as well and the, the, the proximity of it might also be the case. I don't know how, how, how badly behaved were we in Moscow and how badly behaved were we in Brazil. Um, and how badly behaved were we in South Africa? I don't know. The, the, we've obviously got embedded in our minds the preposterous behaviour of our fans in the European Championships. England fans, like French fans, like Dutch fans, like Italian fans, <clears throat> like German fans, like any other fan of any other country, South American fans as well, have a small <clears throat> amount of their fans that behave appallingly. And that's the that, 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 and we spend our, our entire time apologising for that small amount of fans. In the European Championship, what we did was we shot ourselves in the foot by an appalling set of behaviour by tens of thousands of fans. And there's reasons behind that. And some of it might well be alcohol and <clears throat> cocaine. Of course, the alcohol ban wasn't designed by the Qataris to suppress behaviour. It was because they decided they wanted to enforce the laws of their own land and they are ostensibly a dry country and they didn't want it inside the stadiums. OK, it was a very late reversal of their principles and caused them some... Yeah. PR backlashes, but I think, of course, there has to. There, if if there is a, an underlying belief that alcohol creates behaviour adaptations, which I think there is, the fact there is an absence of it probably is compelling to suggest that nobody from any country is finding themselves. Also, the tolerance level, a country that has zero crime as a matter of course, um, in it might be part of the framework. It might also be that there was very small amounts of tickets, so we didn't get a certain fringe of fans over there. But all things being equal, <clears throat> I don't think our reputation <clears throat> has been repaired any more than any other country's reputation that has fans. Yeah, that I mean, I'm talking Europe. more specifically at the more recent event, the Euros final at Wembley. Yeah. We, we, I mean, that that's the more recent event, and that's vivid in the mind. Yeah. I mean, the, the misbehaviour at that was on a spectacular scale, unfortunately. So now... Post Qatar or even during Qatar here, are we seeing that image repaired? Because th th those those vivid images, yeah, from from Wembley well, that day, so. are still in the minds I, I, of many. I suppose so. I don't think they're representative. Those fans that turned up at Wembley for a variety of reasons: bad planning, bad police administration, bad behaviour. Uh, a two-thirds empty, a two-thirds full stadium with Alcohol. availability of seats. Alcohol. Uh, and, they, they turned up early and, and got, sure, many sure, of them many got them, people, the, people, themselves out of their minds. But many people drink alcohol, Jim, and don't cause trouble. It's the person's propensity to want to behave badly that's fueled by alcohol, not necessarily just the alcohol. People, some people just drink and have a nice time. Some people yeah, drink we know, and no, use it. Yeah, we, we know that, but that wasn't the case on that day. Yes, I know, but what point do you want to make? Do, is the the point, point I want to make is this. Do you want me to flagellate England fans because I won't do it? Do you want me to turn around and say that actually I will allow the media to keep building up this picture of these awful, awful England fans so that any time we do anything vaguely resembling being civilised, that that should be some form of redemption? You can go on that journey. I'm not going to go on that journey. Was the reputation of England fans damaged on that day at Wembley? I think the behaviour of that segment of England fans, in the same way that we've seen instances around the world in many parts, not to that extent, and not to the not to the nation's um, shame in the way that a group of England fans behaved appallingly. But if you want to make it about reputations being rebuilt, then with whom and by what? So with whom are we building our reputation? In the, well, in the eyes of the football world, obviously. But every nation has football fans that behave appallingly. If we want to thumb through the litany of events that have happened in different countries where their fans have behaved badly, we could ask their, their, their culture, have you redeemed yourself? I think England fans, on the whole, in the majority, are very good fans. And there is an exception, um, and a very small exception, that I find troubling that we are interested in and conflated a minority 
into the majority. So I'm always going to be very defensive of that because I think it's a terrible trait that we I have in this country. I think you're being overly defensive of me, say so. Well, that's because your view. Here's the situation. It's like me that saying they... Scotland fans, that what happened in 1977 <laughs> is symptomatic of Scotland. Forever and a day now, has Scotland redeemed themselves? Your Herberts that ran on that pitch, that ripped up our turf, that pulled down our crossbars, for the next 50 years, I'm going to ask you, every time you behave yourself in a civilised way, have you redeemed yourself? It'd probably get on your nerves as well. Not even in the slightest. Okay. No, the, the, people, this conversation the people who went on that pitch that day had no right to go on that pitch Have they that redeemed day. themselves, Scotland? The people who sat in the crossbar and broke the crossbar... Uh, Have Scotland these, redeemed themselves? These scenes were just pathetic. Have they redeemed themselves? Well, of Have they rebuilt their reputation? Well, of course they have. If they had the chance to be in Qatar, they would be doing exactly what England, French, Dutch what, are doing at this reputation. time. And I think behaving absolutely impeccably well. Now, we're just back from Qatar... We went to every England game and fair play to every England fan that I met. Absolutely brilliant behaviour. Exemplary behaviour. Not once did I see an England fan in any way misbehaving. And I think it's great. And I think that point needs to be made and it needs to be emphasised because the memory of Wembley is still vivid. OK, so I go back to my original question. The Euros mem I memory. I go back to my original question. How are our fans in Russia? How are our fans in South Africa? How do we behave as a course? If we're going to use this as an example, if we're going to look at what we did at Wembley, which was disgusting and disgraceful for those tens of thousands of people that wanted to behave in a fashion to take advantage of bad administration, in part, we could turn around and say, actually, some of the reasons why people are behaving so well is because they've got no bloody choice over there. They mm. had lots of choice in England because we had a mayor that's a buffoon we had a FIFA oper sorry, UEFA operation that took no responsibility for the event. We had an FA that abdicated responsibility. We had insufficient policing. And we had a two-thirds or a third empty stadium. It doesn't excuse the behaviour, but it does give some backdrop. Now, in Qatar, you and I both know that if anybody steps out of line, those guys are not going to muck about. Those guys quite are, right. And quite rightly so. The problem we had over here is we do muck about. What we do is allow people to glue themselves to roads or to demonstrate left, right and centre without any kind of we police see, all, all you got On this topic, all you've got to do is ask the police. So the police here believe that you've got to go back to Spain 82 or Mexico 1970 for the last time that England emerged from uh, four World Cup games without significant fan trouble. But again, I'm asking you because we're making this point. I don't recall significant fan trouble in Russia. I don't recall significant fan trouble in the 2014 there, World there Cup. There were England fan arrests in, in Russia. What, what the police are telling us is this is the first time and it should be commended. Which police? The, it Our should police. be commended. Yeah. Okay. That it should be commended that there are no arrests. I don't know why you're getting so hot under the collar because I'm not under what we're doing, what we're doing this lunchtime is highlighting the fact that at Qatar 2022, how about this? The UK Football Policing Unit have confirmed that English football fans have not been the subject of a single arrest or police incident at this World Cup. Again, so what do we put it down to? I, I don't know. We put it down to lack of ticketing, geographical situation, disinvestment in the World Cup because the media spent all their time peeing all over it and telling us what an awful place it's going to be. That's nonsense. I, I don't know. Well, it's not nonsense. That's we, spent, nonsense. we spent the entire build-up. Why did you not mention lack of alcohol at stadiums in that list you've just given us? Because I don't necessarily attribute every piece of having owned a football. Club, I don't say every well, piece I'll, of I'll trouble is you caused if you want by me that. To. Right. Yeah, we're, we're talking about alcohol. You're getting we're, hot under the collar. We're, about if it. I was getting hot under the collar, Jim, you'd know about it. What I'm doing is emphasising well, my point. There. Yeah. Okay. So emphasise the point. Is the object of this conversation for you to try to patronise me, or is it for me to be able to well, answer the question? Well, you're going off and one about it. No, I'm not. I disagree with your view. I think it's sensationalistic tripe. I think you trade on it sometimes, and it irritates me. In, so there we are. In what way? Because I think you're trying to make a situation... The fact that there's no alcohol I've, 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 I've doesn't given you, come I've into given it, you an then. example. No, of course it does. It plays a part, as I've just said. And I've just listed the whole litany of the reasons why we may be seeing a far better and far more compelling operation around people's behaviour, from alcohol to the lack of substances that are over there, through to the amount of people that are in no, the country, if you're being through to me, the tolerance. You're more miffed that you think here and now we're making it out to be the English disease. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, you're right. I've that's, never liked, now that's it. That's what I've we're going to now, isn't I it? I hate it. But that's I what we're this, not doing. I hate this self-flagellation in this country. that's what we're not doing. But I hate that self-flagellation in this country. I hate the propensity to allow everybody else that suffers from the same symptoms, your country, the Europeans, to dump on this country and say it's the English disease and but it still I'm exists. I'm agreeing with you on that. So, so that's where, so, so my, 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 my reaction to it is... But here in the UK, we're obviously going to talk about 
the nation that's in Qatar and the nation that we, we look at most closely, and that is England. We're judging ourselves by a set of standards. Have we redeemed ourselves? No more than anybody else's behaviour. If that was the object of the aim, then then I suppose you could say we redeemed ourselves. But I'm also, oh, there explain, you go then. I'm also explaining the conditions in which the circumstances in Wembley happened last year. If that, had been in well, that, that, that tournament had been played in Qatar, there would have never been the policing, never been the disciplines, never been the ticketing situation that we had, and never been the outcome. And the tragedy of it is, is that we are the architects of our own downfall in this country. And, and you'd quick. never have any drunk fans. Um, well... Let people, me answer pe- that for you. People no, can, you wouldn't. Jim, we've, are we sat in hotel bars, people drinking themselves to Palookaville. People could still load themselves up with booze if they want to. It's a 20-minute journey to games. If England fans wanted to go to bars, our guys went out to Irish bars. Our producers went out to Irish bars and had a drink. If these guys <laughs> wanted to go and get themselves drunk and then turn up at a game, they, they could have still to, done it yes. if they wanted to. D- did you see any fan in Qatar worse for wear through alcohol? Um, in the way that we travelled around, Jim? Probably not. But in so far no, I mean, as in, going in, in and out of stadiums. In so far as walking in the stadium, the only time I ever got any kind of feeling of any confrontation was walking through a group of Welsh fans that had a view on my view on Wales. No, Jim, if you're and going, that, if and, you're going and, in through hospitality into VIP sections, no, Sam, you're it, probably it, not going to either, are you? Let's no, get it right. Well, I went to I went to a whole lot more games than you, and we got dropped short and had to walk through swathes and swathes of fans to get to the stadium. And I, for one. Didn't see one drunk fan. Did you take your duffelers bo- with you? But the bottom line is you, this. You, come here. Uh, the, are you, have you had nothing to drink or not? The, we don't know, Jim, but the bottom the, line is... The bottom is, line is, is this, and I'll is, ask you it again. Do you think England fans have gone some way to repairing the image? I would say in whose they've gone eyes? a long way. In whose in the, eyes? In the eyes of the football world. Who, who are they then? Well, the you, people, mean, you, you mean the media? <laughs> the people who cares? Who, the people who make judgments after the likes and, of the and, scenes and who, at Wembley and in the Euros they? final. And who are they then? The same people that can't even... So you're talking about UEFA that couldn't even preside over an absolute debacle in France. Those people. We're not much bothered about what they do or don't do. But, you just but we're said certainly it. bothered you about just our said, own have people. Have we redeemed ourselves in the eyes of who? The media uh, or uh, the British public? Our own eyes, your eyes, my eyes. Mm. The eyes of decent football fans in this country. I, I, I look at what happened at Wembley as an absolute I canker sore. I'm I look exhausted. At, I, I look at the, what happened at Wembley as a canker sore. I look at it as an aberration, and I look at the contributing factors. Coming out of COVID, a dysfunctional society, despicable, poor policing, lack of organisation, lack of discipline, a whole variety of things, and of course, antisocial behaviour. But they don't have antisocial behaviour in Qatar, do they? Because if you have antisocial behaviour in Qatar... You know what the consequences are. If you have antisocial behaviour in this country, you get a pat on the back and sent down the road. I'm not so sure. Different about societies. That. All I'd say is this well done to the England fans who have been out there and keep it going because uh, the eyes will be on you, of course, uh, when you play the French this weekend. But thus far, every single one of them should be congratulated on their impeccable behaviour so far.